Hey you guys, it's Brian. We are back with another video and this one I wanted to make to basically explain why I stopped making videos on like MBTI types and how it kind of like ties into what I'll probably do probably be doing uh, in the future. So if you noticed on my channel, um, the videos have not been so much about MBTI and analyzing people's personality types, right? It's been more spirituality based, which is, again, something that I'm kind of moving into. Uh, the reason why I didn't want to make any more videos on MBTI is because it felt like I had to constantly judge people um, and put them in a box, right? That's basically what MBTI is. It's looking at someone, their, their personality, how they behave, uh, their quirks, their, you know, speech patterns, and then comparing that to like, let's say a, a chart of how a personality type behaves. And so I felt like I had to judge people 24 seven and it's kind of taxing when you're always having to analyze someone. And so I thought I'd take a break from that and move into something that's less analytical, which is spirituality, which is uh, more, it's more focused on the heart rather than the brain. Um, so that's why I stopped for a while. Um, and then now I move on videos on more spirituality, just kind of explaining uh, how I view life, how we should view, how I think we should uh, live life to to live a life that is like happy and more in line with who we are as our authentic selves. Because I believe that is what life is about, right? If you're not happy, if you're not content with or satisfied being who you are, then what's the point of living, right? The point of living or the point of life is to discover who you actually are, discover your hobbies and um, your likes and dislikes before you've had the conditioning of society imposed on you. And so tying both of these concepts together, which is MBTI and spirituality, what I've discovered over, I don't, I don't know how many weeks or months it's been, but it's been a while, right? I'm growing as well um, in my own learnings every single day. And what I've discovered was that basically you can attribute your personality type, your MBTI type, to the conditioning that you have been exposed to uh, from society. And so if you know what your MBTI type is, you know what your conditioning is, which is um, not your authentic self, basically. So whatever your MBTI type is, that's not really who you are. That is the persona, the identity that you have taken on because that is the identity that has caused you the least amount of pain when interacting with other members in society. Um, the easiest way to think about this is like, let's say, think about how you behave when you were a kid, right? When you're a child, a toddler. You're five years old, you're running around um, everywhere, grocery stores, you know, knocking fruits and vegetables to the ground, making a ruckus, causing chaos everywhere, right? That's your authentic self. You don't know what bad or good behavior is. You just do whatever makes you happy in that moment. Um, now imagine you do that when you're all grown up, you're 25 years old. Well, you're probably gonna get thrown into a mental hospital, right? Because of the way you act. And so in order to avoid pain, we put on the identity of someone that is grown up, which is a responsible, mature adult that doesn't knock fruit and vegetables to the ground. And we do this because we want to avoid um, pain, which is being locked up somewhere against our will or being judged by others uh, as someone who is crazy. And because we want to avoid this pain, we adopt the personality that we do. Um, and we learn about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. The problem is that what is acceptable and not acceptable is going to vary depending on a few factors, such as where you live, uh, your culture, and uh, your upbringing. So for example, a good example of this is uh, compare, let's say, the west to the east in terms of uh, 
how people behave when someone dies, right? So in the West, there's a lot of mourning, there's a lot of like seriousness. Um, you recite like, you know, basically the person's like, everyone's basically sad, right? This, the, the mood is very somber. Um, people aren't very happy. The mood is very serious. And if you do like, you know, take it lightly or you make jokes of it, then it's seen as unacceptable, right? You wouldn't laugh at a funeral because it's people considered offensive. Whereas, however, if you take this, the, the concept of death, and you compare it to other uh, places around the world, like for example, um, I know in Africa, it's like they don't view death as something bad. They view it as a celebration, right? It's like, oh, this person has uh, done their work on this planet, and so now they are able to uh, graduate. And so they no longer have to be here. And so for them, um, they actually hire what are known as professional uh, coffin bearers or coffin dancers. Basically, it's like these guys, they like carry the coffin on their shoulders and start dancing. If you've seen like that dancing coffin meme, you'll know what I mean. But basically, that is not a joke, right? It is actually like a celebration in honor of the person who has passed away. And instead of, you know, crying their eyes out and like being sad, they hold like celebrations, they hold feasts, they're dancing around, uh, they're, you know, playing music, they're, the, the atmosphere is lively. And so this is a very good example of the contrast between how your culture can affect uh, the identity that you have grown up with. And that identity is most easily portrayed by your MBTI type. Um, because your MBTI type tells you everything, basically it's a summation of all your life experiences, all the conditioning that you've been exposed to, and how that has helped to shape who you are, and the, the false persona that you have to put on in order to avoid pain. So, with this knowledge in mind, uh, because I... I, di I didn't want to make videos again on MBTI because it felt like I'm judging people. But now, all of a sudden, because I've come to this realization that a person's MBTI type is not actually who they are. It's not actually their authentic self. Uh, we just think it is. The MBTI type is actually personification of the conditioning that we think is acceptable. So, for example, I'm an INFJ, right? Because I think that is the most acceptable type when it comes to interacting with other members in society. That, will, that is the type that brings me the least amount of pain. And because it does, right? Because an INFJ is very responsible. They are sympathetic towards the emotions of others. Uh, they, they put others' needs. They're very aware of others' needs. Uh, they're quiet. They don't make a lot of noise. And they are punctual. They're organized. And they're consistent. All the traits of what a responsible, mature adult would be. But if you get to know an INFJ, if you have an INFJ in your life, you'll know that when you get to know them, they are actually the exact opposite. They can be very impatient. They can be crazy. They like to like make dark jokes, dark humor. They can jump from one subject to the other, so they're not very organized. And uh, they can, even though they are empathetic, they can just turn that off, right? So for example, best example I can give is Adolf Hitler, right? He was the best, he was not very empathetic towards the needs of others, right? Even though, as an INFJ, it is said that we are empathetic towards others, but, you know. Um, moving on, anyway. So, yeah. Basically, your MBTI type does not tell you who, who you actually are, right? You could say that you have two personas. One is the one that you really want to show the world. One is the one that you really want to show people, but you can't. And the other one is the one that you have to put on in order to not be thrown into a mental asylum. Uh, so, your MBTI type... Your personality type can be kind of seen as your ego, which is your, your, your false sense of self. This is the one, this is the identity which you have to live up to uh, on a daily basis in order to appear sane or appear consistent with other people, right? This is further reinforced by the people around you, like your family. They are used to seeing a certain side of you, a certain personality type. And so if you deviate from this personality type, they're going to start calling you weird or they're going to start calling you, you know, mentally ill. They're going to start treating you differently. They're going to start judging you. Uh, that is why we are more comfortable interacting with our close friends than we would with like 
let's say our mom and dad, right? Our mom and dad does not see the true side of us, does not see the side which we show to our friends. And that's because what is socially acceptable to your friends is not what is socially acceptable to your mom and dad, right? Your mom and dad uh, expect you to behave like a, like a responsible adult. Your friends don't expect you to be, behave that way. Your friends want you to behave like a wild party animal and be fun, right? And that ties into your personality type. Uh, so you will behave differently depending on the people that you are interacting with in that moment. Um, and at the same time, just your default setting of who you actually are is probably not your MBTI type. Your MBTI type, I think, just tells you, again, your preferences. Your preferences on what is most comfortable for you. Uh, and so that is how you can kind of view who you really are if you're having like trouble uh, determining what your MBTI type is or your personality type. It's because you probably have two sides that are conflicting one another. So you have your true self, which wants to come out, but then at the same time, it's too afraid to come out because it's going to be judged and thrown into, you know, behind bars, if it does. And so you have this constant struggle between I want to be myself versus I have to put on this mask uh, that society wants me to, to, to put on. And so realizing that and coming to terms with that is the easiest way you can discover who you really are authentically as a person. And if you delve deep enough into this, which is why I turn to spirituality, because that is, that is, I believe, the best way to kind of explain who you are, is that you are everything and you are nothing, which means that your, your true personality type cannot really be tied down to a single uh, four-letter acronym for who you are. You are everything, you are all the types that you can possibly be, because it depends on the situation that you're in. Um, and if you are authentic, then you'll know that basically there are no limitations as to who you could actually be. The only limitations that we that we come up with are the ones that have um, been imposed on us in society, because again, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in the eyes of others is um, how we also view ourselves. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd prefer to see more spirituality based videos or if you prefer to see more MBTI type videos. Um, if I do go into MBTI videos, it's probably to just analyze like, again, the behaviors, the speech patterns, like the, the real reason why I don't like making MBTI type videos is because there's so much inconsistency in the way that people type themselves. So for example, I am very confident that when I type someone as a certain type, it is because I see certain characteristics in them that correspond to what that type would be like. So for example, ENTJ, very direct, very like efficient, no bullshit, um, confrontational, assertive. And so if I see those traits in someone, I'm going to type them as an ENTJ, most likely. But then they may argue with that and be like, no, I'm not an ENTJ, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not sort of, because again, they are unaware. So, so the reason why I don't like making MBTI type videos and typing people is because people don't even know themselves, right? They can't even type themselves. They're not even aware of their own shortcomings. They're not even aware of their own ego or what their own identity, identity is. It's just that they've lived with the mask for so long, they don't even realize that they're wearing the mask. And so when you tell them you're wearing a mask, they're like, no, I'm not. But then very obviously you know that they're wearing a mask because because you have seen it in other people, right? It's always, it's always the people that are in denial that are the last ones to figure out that they are the ones that are wrong, right? It's very difficult for the ego to admit that they're wrong. And so that's why I don't really like making MBTI type videos. It's not that. I don't like making the videos is that the audience that watches it, n not necessarily you guys, but other people, uh, the people that watch them, it's like they are very resistant to accepting that they are a certain type or that they have certain characteristics in them because they want to, again, be seen as someone altruistic or like good. They don't want to admit that they have shortcomings. They don't want to admit that they're like human. They don't want to admit that they, that they can't see their own faults um, because it's an unconscious, right? It's You don't realize that you are doing something wrong until someone compares what you are doing to someone that is doing right, right? 
It's like, it's like comparing what a child would do versus what an adult would do in a situation, right? Like, the child will be like, I'm not doing anything wrong. Like, what's wrong with squishing insects on a daily basis, right? I'm helping the planet. Well, then the, the adult might be like, well, because when you squish like insects, then you are messing up the numbers that are needed to balance the ecosystem. And without insects, then we're not going to have plants, right? We're not, and we're not really going to have like a livable, livable planet. Like insects are annoying, but at the same time, they are important to the ecosystem that we live on, on this planet in order to keep it thriving and functioning. Anyway, I've, I'm, that's enough ranting. Uh, from me, let me know what you'd like to see more of. I uh, hope you got a lot of value out of this video and hopefully that ties up why I moved away from MBTI and more into spirituality because I believe eventually we all outgrow the box that we put ourselves in when it comes to what our personality type is and then we move on to really discovering who it is we are. So when we move on from that box, we move into the realm of spirituality, um, which is much less judgmental in terms of like discovering who a person is. It's more open-ended and so that allows for more exploration and more growth. Hello, Mr. Rabbit. Anyway, uh, that's it from me. I'll see you in the next video. Hope you have a wonderful day. Love you all and uh, peace out.